Town That Dreaded Sundown. Oh man, this movie is a bowl of fruits and nuts. Really, out of all the movies I've covered this month, this is one of the only ones where I really don't know where to start. Because there's so much going on both behind the scenes and in front of the camera that I just, I don't know where to start. So I guess I am just going to start. This movie was based off of historical events, a series of killings that happened in Texarkana, Texas in 1949. The killings were referred to as the Texarkana Moonlight Murders. And, well, let's just say they play super loose with the facts on this one. As most based on true story movies tend to do, however, this time around it was particularly bad. So much so that relatives of the victims sued the producers of this movie for basically like false advertising. There were posters of this movie that say that the killer still lurks the streets of Texarkana. And and they argued that, yeah, it's they, they were kind of triggered. They were basically triggered. And yeah, I can kind of see why. Like I'd have they have a bit of a case here. And well, I guess getting into the story, it tells the story of, well, a series of murders convicted by a person wearing a hood and calling himself the Masked Phantom, or the Phantom Killer. Or actually, the news calls him that. He is, he's called the Phantom Killer in the news because he only comes out at night. Again, I'm at a loss covering this one, so I'll just try and string together some coherence. First and foremost, the actor they got to play the Phantom was the best part of the movie. He's played, the Phantom is played by Bud Davis, who would later go on to be a prevalent stuntman for movies like Forrest Gump and Inglorious Bastards. So he had a long career after this movie. And he does the part about as good as you can ask for. There are several practical stunts where I said to myself, all right, that was at least good. And kind of similar to talking about the blob, I love the 40s aesthetic, the cars, the food, the prom that all of these high school students go to. I kind of like that. I like the spirit of that. The rest of this movie, oh boy, it is not good. It really comes down to really one thing, the tonal shifts. This movie goes from over-the-top silly to downright disturbing so fast, it'll make you sick. It's like a roller coaster at Disney World or Six Flags. One of the kills that the Phantom Killer does in this movie involves him stabbing a young man with a knife. Now, what's so silly about that? The knife is attached to a trombone. No, I am not kidding. This killer attaches a knife to a trombone and uses the trombone, like so, to do the deed. Yeah, just play the clip. I have a few questions, starting with what the fuck? And then there are these cops who are trying to find the Phantom Killer, and they're doing... It seems like they're doing pretty much anything but trying to find this killer. Among other things, they get into a, a Blues Brothers-esque car chase with someone who they think is the Phantom Killer, but he pretty much isn't. And then, because the Phantom Killer is really into women and and is seen with claw with female victims have claw marks and teeth marks around their sensitive areas for lack of a better word they have one of the cops dress up as a woman in order to lure in order to lure the phantom killer out number 1 that's something looney tunes did and somehow bugs bunny doing it was far more effective and second of all I'm sure this is offensive to someone, but I'm honestly, I honestly can't, like, I can't pinpoint who. So I'm just going to say it's offensive to anyone who has good taste. It's a good blanket statement right there. This movie is wild, but for all the wrong reasons. I hear there is a remake starring Jackie Earl Haley. I have heard sort of good things, so I at least want to see that, but oh man. The Town the Dreaded Sundown is a trip in all the wrong ways.